And you listen, you hear, oh, there's a blue tick calling. OK, it's not ideal weather for bird spotting. City birds don't really behave that much differently to country birds. But David Lindo never let a little fog get in the way. He's a well-known figure on the British birding scene. By the age of eight, I was taking out my fellow uh, school buddies and showing them birds in the local woods. And I remember pestering my mum to get me a pair of binoculars. This morning's tally is low. A few starlings and a shy carrion crow. No matter. Every sighting's a feather in Lindo's cap. Starling fun. You feel like you're in the wild just watching. British bird watchers are a competitive bunch, fighting to get the first glimpse of rare species. And one of the grandfathers of this national passion is a transplanted American. Anyone who stopped, who is a bird watcher in this country, would have known and heard about John James Audubon. So his legacy is still here. Lot number 50 now, the birds of America. This, this is, is John lot, James Audubon's masterpiece, Birds of America. Three million six, three million seven hundred thousand. One of the largest and rarest books on earth. Three million nine hundred thousand, four million pounds I have. I Most have copies are in here. museums. There are only 11 left in private hands. Bernard Shapiro is a rare book dealer in London. It's the top dog, it's number one. It's the, as I said, it's probably the most important printed book outside the Gutenberg Bible. It's the pinnacle. Born in Haiti, Audubon came of age in the woods of Pennsylvania. He was a self-taught naturalist with big ambition to catalog and paint all the birds of America. His more than 400 engravings, though scientifically accurate, are anything but clinical. Brimming with life, these birds look ready to fly off the page. He wanted to paint birds on a scale of one to one, which is why the book's so huge. Everyone else had sort of taken a big eagle and condensed him. He said, no, 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 my angle is if the eagle is six foot tall, I maybe bring his wings in, but he's going to be six foot tall in the book. And that was his cachet. But Audubon's bird art didn't sell in the US. His unorthodox style had ruffled too many feathers. So almost bankrupt, he decided to migrate to England. And I think this shows him at his very best. Dr. David Goldthorpe kind of is Sotheby's rare book expert. That, that. And the luminescence of the owls and their eyes, they're quite extraordinary. Audubon arrived in England in 1826, dressed up like Daniel Boone. The frontiersman image went over well in polite English society, and soon Audubon had sold his book project, parceled out five paintings at a time over 11 years. Audubon, soon after his uh, arrival in, in Britain, was introduced to the aristocracy and to the scientific community. And very, in very short order, he got subscriptions from dukes, earls, and, and the king. Finally, at the age of 45, Audubon had at last gained both a fortune and a solid reputation as a naturalist. The irony is he shot a lot of the birds to, to, to paint them. Oh, did he? But in those days, that was, that was what one did, obviously. <laughs> so he'd observe them in the field and then get specimens. He was a trained taxidermist. He would stuff them, then go back to his studio and arrange them with, on bits of wire in, in, what, in a kind of natural pose and then paint from that. Audubon's book documented 25 new bird species. I'm a hunter. You know, when I go out watching birds, I'm doing what he used to do, but with a pair of binoculars. Sadly, even Lindo's binoculars can't help him see some of these birds. They're extinct. My all-time favourite bird is the Eskimo curlew. I'm insanely jealous. But I think most birders would be jealous. I mean, the fact that he saw all those species that I can't see now. Five million eight, five million nine hundred thousand. Six million pounds I have now, six million. Audubon's masterpiece is, of course, exquisitely beautiful, but it's also scientifically valuable, although not priceless. Last chance and selling for six million five hundred thousand pounds. Any more? Sold for six million five hundred thousand pounds. That's over ten million dollars. So who's the big league buyer? You know what, I scratched my chin at 6.1 million, actually. No, in fact, the new owner is Michael Tolomac, a fine uh, the, art dealer the, the, in the, London. The, the, the realistic bird depictions are truly spectacular, 
And I think that this is one of the miracles of the early 19th century. So for the moment, the British get to hang on to the most expensive copy of one of America's most iconic books.